a late night repeat go pretty good right now? Oh, you bet it would. <laughs> Ciao, a man who, like the rest of America, is sick and tired of these silly little announcements. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program. My name is David Letterman. I'll be the host of the festivities for the next... How late are we on tonight? Two hours? Two and a half hours? <laughs> Uh, tonight is our special Thursday show, and if you've ever seen the program before, you know that on Thursday, it's not just a show, it's a festival. <laughs> and viewer mail, that's right, ma'am, one of the features in the, the festival. Uh, Vice President Bush is out of the country, and uh, I didn't realize this, Sarah McClendon is on the show tonight. She's been covering uh, Washington and the politics in the Capitol for many years. In fact, she's worked uh, with uh, nine presidents nine presidents, and she told me that whenever Vice President Bush leaves the country, Ronald Reagan has this inflatable Vice President doll that he... <laughs> uh, well, the space shuttle had trouble again today. They were doing some kind of laser experiment up there. And uh, listen to this. NASA, the ground control in Houston, they give these boys the wrong set of numbers. They give them their position in outer space, which, by the way, is vast. Um, they give them their position now in, in feet, as opposed to, Paul, what are they supposed to give it to them in? In degrees. Yeah, that's right. No, no, nautical miles. Oh, they're supposed to give it in nautical miles. <laughs> Paul said that with great conviction, hoping there will be an edit later. Um, yeah. No, they gave it to them in nautical miles. Instead of feet, instead of nautical miles... They're giving it to them in feet. That's right. That was the mistake. The mistake yeah. was they gave it to them in feet. It should have been nautical miles. Yeah. Now, coincidentally, this was... Uh, same thing happened on the very first episode of Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Ooh. Here's our uh, good friend, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Say hello to Paul. Good morning. So nice to see you, Paul. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, in answer to your question, it's Marcus Miller on bass. He's been... Uh, Marcus, nice in, uh, to see you. ...for the last couple of days. <laughs> Greatest. I am in a festive mood today. That's good. Festive mood. Because I understand it's not so much a show. It's a festival. It's a festival. <laughs> and, uh... Are you coming to the big softball game tomorrow? I'll be there. Are you coming? Are you going to yeah, be there? I'll be there. You are going to be there. You heard it. That's on not what you said TV. earlier. Well, it's, I haven't made it to one of those games yet, uh, but I'll be there tomorrow. I understand you're playing Good Morning America. We I are mean, playing. We. I mean, understand we're playing Good Morning America. That's right. Now, do you, what do you think the chances are of David Hartman showing up? Well, maybe. Not we'll... a chance in hell. <laughs> Guess not. We'll be playing the uh, the folks at Good Morning America, and I hesitate to call them anything like weenies at this point, so I won't. <laughs> We'll just, we'll just see how the ball game progresses, and then Monday we'll talk about it. We have some heavy hitters on our We have, our we have a fine team. You know, we demolished Good Morning, or uh, what is that show? Uh, Entertainment, Entertainment Tonight. tonight. Yeah. yeah. Mary Hart wasn't at that away. one either. She wasn't there. You know what you she You go to every doing. game, though. I've been, I think I missed one. I had a terrible broken bone in my leg. There you Couldn't go. Couldn't play. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, that'll be uh, Thursday, uh, when? Tomorrow. When am I announcing it? Like, yeah, tickets are uh, seven fifty, ten dollars and, and the proceeds go somewhere we don't know. Um, we got a good show for you, folks, and uh, let's prove it here. Uh, Thursday, by the way, if you're just joining us, is the night that we uh, answer our viewer mail. I believe we're the only show on television that ever responds to their viewer mail. 60 Minutes pretends they respond to their mail, <laughs> but those are phony letters, and there's going to be an investigation. Um... Dear Dave, letter number, uh, number one begins, Sorry I missed your show last night. I was out getting drunk. <laughs> uh, sincerely, magician Ben Robinson, Astoria, New York. Well, Ben, uh, all I have to say is it certainly takes a big man to come forward and say that kind of thing, especially since the police have been looking for you for nearly a week now. In fact, here, take a look at this morning's newspaper. Huh? How does this make you feel? Look at there, buddy. Yes, sir. Drunk magician solves bar patron in half. <laughs> <laughs> this is solid comedy, this stuff right here. The phony newspaper headlines, you can't beat this, America. 
Letter number two. By the way, uh, let's have our letters called off tonight so there's no scoring mistakes at home by our uh, director, Mr. Al Gurney. Al, will you call these off for us? Yeah. It's Hal. How, Hal. I'm sorry, Hal. All right. <laughs> what, what? Letter number two. <laughs> That's our director, Mr. Uh, Hal uh, Gurney, ladies and gentlemen. Letter number two. Where do your guests stay before they come on the set? Do they dare ask for money to be a guest on the program? Uh, this is kind of a two-part question. Here are two answers. Before they come out, they stay in the green room right around the corner there. Uh, but I'm afraid network policy forbids us from actually paying our guests. However, we do try to provide them with some kind of compensation, and I think this file tape will show you exactly what I mean. Uh, Hal, roll that uh, file tape, will you? <laughs> and they thought it was a gerbil. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, this is a great book. It's called uh, Life in a Truck. This is the author, Arlene Ginder. Arlene, nice meeting you. Mm -hmm. It's a fabulous you. book. Thank uh, you. We'll be right back, folks. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we can't afford to pay you for being on the show, but uh, I'd like you to come over to the prize wonderland, and I think we have something lovely for you. Oh, great. Uh, Arlene, this is uh, NBC board chairman Grant Tinker, Arlene Gender. Uh, here you go. We have uh, correction fluid, you have uh, tape, you have envelopes, uh, staple remover, and uh, paper clips. I'll go with the paper clips. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Help yourself. Great, thanks. Easy now, easy. Okay. Oh. I hope you enjoy this. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks Bye -bye. for being here. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Nice to see you again, Grant. Thank you. Yes, sir. Easy. <laughs> Letter number three. We're up to, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Al. Letter number three. All right. <laughs> Dear Dave, how about showing us a picture of your first driver's license that has your own picture on it? Sincerely, John Knight, Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, I knew this was going to come up sooner or later, and, uh, okay, I'll show it to you, but, uh, because of security reasons, there's really not much, much else I can tell you about it, but there it is. That's, that's my driver's license. <laughs> and, uh, kind of our little secret, okay? Okay. Letter number four. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> Uh, letter number four comes to us, by the way, from Vacaville, California. You know where that is, Paul, Vacaville? No, sir, I do not. I'm not sure either. I think there's a prison there in Vacaville. That'd be the Vacaville... Uh, State or State federal prison, yeah. I think that's what, where that is. Um, hey, Dave, I heard, the most, I heard that most of your guests are provided accommodations... Well, there's something missing here. I've heard, I've heard that most of your guests are provided accommodations, have been provided by the Berkshire Palace. Uh, is that what that says? Well, close enough. All right. Uh, okay, what do you do with the rest of your guests? Paul Walborski, Vacaville, California. Uh, Paul, actually, all of our guests are certainly provided with accommodations at the Berkshire Place Hotel, with the exception of one, and that's Dr. Ruth Westheimer, who, who for some reason or another, insists on staying in this, uh, well, I'm not sure. It's actually just a shoebox here. <coughs> Let me see. How's everything going, Dr. Ruth? Very well. Oh, good. Uh, it, it looks like you chewed off most of that corn on the cob we left you. Did you enjoy that? I like very much. Oh, good. Is, uh... Ruth, is, uh, is it fun? It's, it's fun. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, I think the people would be interested in knowing that you actually have some tiny plumbing in there. How, does that really work? It really does work. Okay. And, uh, wait, wait a minute, you're scratching there, Ruth. Let me help you out. Let me get that for you. How's that feel? That's great. Oh, good. <laughs> do, do you really like that, Dr. Ruth? I like very much. Uh -huh. yeah, you really do like that, though, huh? I like very much. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll tell you what, Ruth, let me just settle down some of this shredded newspaper here, and we'll put the lid back on. How's that? That's fine. Yes. Okay. Well, good night, Dr. Ruth. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Where are we? I've completely lost track of these letters. Letter number five. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, let's see. Letter number five. Dear Dave, I have a dilemma. Half of my roommates like to watch you at night. The other half would rather watch old Star Trek reruns. <laughs> Dave, please help me. My life is in turmoil. Sincerely, Roger Zeitzinger, State College, Pennsylvania. Uh, well, Roger, that's certainly a problem. And, you know, we tried to solve that last year with our half and half show, but uh, what we, we did, we put our regular program on one side of the screen and then an old Star Trek episode on the other side, but 
it, it really didn't go as we had hoped. I think we have some footage of that now, Hal, if you show the folks. Uh, I kept him. There he is, the lump monster. Set phasers on kill, Scotty. Open fire. Uh, Dr. Ruth, I'm, I'm going to give you a tiny little sandwich now. I hope you enjoy it. There you go, Dr. Ruth. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Ruth. All right. Well, <laughs> what did I tell you? It is a festival, isn't it, kids? Tracy Ullman is here, Brian Adams, uh, Sarah McClendon, and uh, another all-new installment of Demolishing Stuff by Tossing It Off a Five-Story Tower. We'll be right back. We have, uh, tonight is going to be a terrific show, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, I don't say that often, and when I do say it, I certainly mean it. Uh, Paul, you know, coming into work this morning, did you have any trouble with that jam down at 46th and about 8th? No, I didn't, I didn't go by that. I didn't go up. You know, that they're thing. finishing off the Canico building. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here in New York, they put buildings up left and right. Every time you turn around, there's a brand new building, and I think they're, they're just about done with, uh, they're going to top it out today and finish it off. Hal, can we, can we see the Canico building from here? Here it is. Then. Maybe we can't see there. You're going to finish it up tonight. <laughs> And I think any second now they're going to... Oh, yeah, there they go. There it goes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. They're building buildings now. That'll be here at the turn of the century. That's a, that's a honey. Wait a minute. Let's see if we can't... Oh! <laughs> Just a little fun with the folks in the Conoco building up there in the revolving restaurant on the top. Well, my first guest tonight is not a citizen of this country. She is, however, a very entertaining woman, so we're going to let her stay. She can also be seen in a major motion picture called Plenty. Please welcome singer, actress, and alien, Tracy Ullman. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. So nice to see you. Nice to see you again. How are you? Have a seat. Have a seat. You look great. Thanks Oi, for being here. That's enough of that. Who will thwistles? This? <laughs> I'm not showing my legs today. It's a midriff. Get the tan. That's a so very nice, nice tan. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where did you get the tan? Um, where have I been to this time? Now, the last time I saw you, I'd just been to Mexico. Mm -hmm. I went. For $300, round trip, your food, your grub, your hotel, absolutely everything, to the Gambia in Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a bit dodgy. Let's put it this way. I mean, after two days, there was this terrible smell on the beach. You know, I'm lying there, topless, I might add. And there's this terrible... <laughs> there's this terrible you're, you're smell. You're actually to topless? Yeah, I go yeah. topless. Yeah. yeah, well, it's okay. I'm not going to keep talking about my breasts and things. It's awful, isn't it? I just get carried away. So, there's this awful smell on the beach. Uh -huh. Are you listening? Of course I'm listening. I stood up, and I'm looking around, you know, and two beaches up, there's this huge dead cow. Just, I mean, it's terrible. And you try calling the Gambian health authorities on a Sunday afternoon. It's not easy. <laughs> You're not in a hurry to come out and no. drag the carcass off, Absolutely. I guess. No. Uh, it, so the cow had what, washed up from the sea? I suppose so. <laughs> cow fishing sometimes and they don't get in the boat quick enough and they just toss it back in and well it's we had a barbecue that night at the hotel. <laughs> oh no you didn't the gag uh, the gag uh and uh, so this was recent when, when were you there about two months ago yeah now what, what when did you finish this movie is this out yet this, oh, this was ages ago i finished that ages ago well, when is it coming so out much um it comes out in september i think uh -huh. and this is a big mo big movie this is a big thing who else is me? in this film this is a bit of class uh -huh. um it's meryl Meryl Streep. Oh. I know her so affectionately, isn't it incredible? What did you call Nobody her? Nobody speaks Meryl. I call her Meryl, but don't, don't tell her that, will you? Um, <laughs> Meryl Sting. Sting. Uh -huh. I call him Sting. Um, Sir John Gielgud. What do you call him? Um, Sir John, always. Uh -huh. um, who else? Sam Neill, Charles Dance. Lots of people there. Tell me the deal. What's the deal on Meryl Streep? She's now, a I, lovely girl. Now, here's what I've heard. I've heard... And, and this now is what I've heard. Now, don't get bitchy here, David. I'm not going to get no, bitchy. No, I'm not slagging anyone off tonight. But here, you're not doing what? Slagging 
slagging anyone off. A very English expression. Slugging anyone off. Slagging. Slagging anyone off. Slagging, yeah. Right. Okay, now here's my... This is what I've heard of Meryl Streep. Yeah. Say she's... What character did she play in this movie? Um, Susan Trahern. Susan Trahern. Very British. Very British. Okay. Yeah. So the, the second Meryl Streep shows up in the morning, what, yeah. a, what about noon she rolls in? No, no. What time she show up? No, we're talking a professional woman here. What time? Uh, five in the morning, possibly. Yeah, right. Yeah. No. <laughs> She's just getting in at five. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm just being silly. But now I've heard that she'll show up and she'll be that character all damn day. <laughs> Yeah, she is a bit like that. She's incredibly professional. She is, yeah. But it drives you nuts, yeah. doesn't it? She's so bloody good, it makes me sick. Exactly. There's nothing that girl can't do. She's fabulous. Well, I, no, I'm not arguing that she isn't a great actress. But I, I'm just saying that, you know, if it comes to... If I'm ever asked to be in a film with her, yeah. I'm not going to do which it. Which she won't be after this, David, <laughs> let's face it. Now, is she like that? You go to lunch with her, hi, Meryl, want a hot dog? And she's the character. I'm, Meryl's not here. Meryl, it was hit by a truck. I'm Susan Trahoon. Not quite, not quite to that extent. I know, I know what you're guessing at. I, get, I, I understand you. I know where you're coming from, okay? <laughs> I know where you're coming from. All right, from. tell me about your part in the film. What um, do you play? I play a lunatic, sort of, um... <laughs> I play a person who sort of, like, does drugs in 1946, mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. And, um... Was I that did, an American play, accent? It sounds awful, doesn't it? I play, like, the friend of the star in it. But that's mm -hmm. what I do, that's what I do. Yeah. It's a very nice part. And, and was it a good film? It is good. It's very classy. It's beautifully shot. It's very nice. Now, is this, what, color. Is this, <laughs> is this what you want to do? You want to be an actress because you also sing and you're a comedian? Well, and what all that? should I do? You see, I've arrived in this country, everyone, and, um, oh no, they're thinking, and I am either going to breed dogs or have a career. Now, what shall I do? To yeah, all right, thank you very much. Talking of dogs, I'm going to show you some new outfits I have for my Yorkshire Terrier, Mr. Binky Vermont from Vermont. <laughs> Now, I told you, I warned you about this last time, so don't look funny. Now, I've got... We have to do a commercial. Look, you get, you get oh, your little right. fashion show for I'll dogs wait, organized wait, there. I'll wait. And uh, we'll be back. No, you can get it all set up. We'll be right back. With this. Thank you. you want to show your little, uh, your little dog outfit here? I think here. I should. These have just been sent to me from England. Now, I think he does a Vegas act. Look, this is the Vegas cape. Remind you, this, he's a Yorkshire Terrier, right? Uh -huh. There's the Vegas cape. How, how, uh... He's seeing this for the first time, by the way, because I've, you know, I've got to get back to Los Angeles to give them to him. Now Don't how... get too excited, Binky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where's the hat gone? When, have what, you nicked some of his costume? No, costumes? I didn't grab anything. What, oh, look what? at this. The bellhop. There's his little hat, and this is, the work on this is fabulous, everyone. Look, there's his little bellhop outfit. <laughs> And it's got Hotel Vermont on the epaulets. Isn't that fabulous? Now who, who made this for the dog? My friend Polly in uh -huh. England. Yeah. She's recovering from something, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> it's in the home. They let them sew and things like that in the afternoon. And, and, and when there's will the, the dog wear that? The flares. That's the, the cat suit? Yeah. You dress him like a cat. No, a cat suit. You know, a Vegas cat suit. You must have had a crinoline leisure suit or a cat suit at some time in your life, no, David. No, I never really the had zip one. zip up here? No. It catches the hair? No. no you're you're calling one. it a cat suit? A cat suit, yeah. Oh, I think there Paul probably had one. Do you have a cat suit, Paul? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> the chain belt. Now, when, uh, how long does the dog wear these and, and when? Do you know he likes putting them on? Mm-hmm. Some people are thinking, you're so cruel to this dog, Tracy. But I get these costumes out and he goes, mm, mm. <laughs> he wants to put them on. He does. He and loves them. You leave him in them all day? You take him out? You, what yeah, do you well, do? they have all little vents so that, you know, nothing messy gets on them. It's all, you know, ventilated and properly. No, come on, let's be serious, you know. So, um... Well, that's a way with real cat suits are like fabulous. that. I'll bring him on the show next time, you know, and you can see him in them. Well, that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> we love you, Pinky. Uh, now, uh, so is that it for the dog suits? That's it. I'm thinking of some more ideas now, for him. You oh, know. Okay. He's going to do a fashion spread. Now, I where think. are you living now? Are you still? I, in? I'm in Los Angeles at the moment. Yeah. And what do you what do you do there for fun, other than dress your dog? <laughs> I go to horrific nightclubs. Like what? Where and, do you go um, in LA? We went to like the top club the other night. I'm not mentioning any names. We went to the top club. It was desperate. It was so scary. What's the like? What's the top club? The Mention toilet, the name of the you know, top going, club. <laughs> they go like this with their hair and they go. Do you know, Kim, I've seen touch my left breast. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They just, they just, you know. <laughs> I'm never going to talk to him again in my life. Just, you know. A rumor went round that Piers Adora had arrived. I was so excited. 
because now go to your video shop now and get the lonely lady with Piers Adora in it. My God. Oish. Exciting? Oish. Oish. It's so <laughs> when she gets raped in scene two by a garden hose. <laughs> no, now come on, this is watching it. It's so it's so fabulous. So seriously, it's so enjoyable. It was a brilliant movie. It's really fabulous. And there's a sequence in it that all I can say if I was doing a review of it, I would say it's a triumph of animation. <laughs> You have to seriously see this film. It's really worth it. That's a little tip from me there. Now, is it true that you had dinner with... Uh, tell me who you had dinner with recently. In, famous people. Oh, they just flocked to me, Dave. Um, <laughs> um, oh, I had tea with Boy George yesterday well, and tea. Marilyn and Cindy Lauper. Yes. Right. Let's hear it for them. Now, who, who is, uh, who's Marilyn? Well, Marilyn is uh, a friend of George's. And they're very well brought up boys. Mm -hmm. You're a well brought up boy. Well, thank you very I much. I can imagine. He's the sort of guy you could be polite to your mother, isn't he? Well, I would. He comes on like a baddie, but he'd be really nice to your mum. I'd be very polite yeah. to you. I'm being polite to you, I think. <laughs> you don't think so? You're always polite to me. Now, uh, so it was Boy George, Marilyn. Marilyn, Cindy Lopper. Uh -huh. And what did you guys talk about? What did Charles talk about? Um, <laughs> gosh, I don't know, just really normal things. You know, we had a cup of tea. You know, a little chat, you know. It was very nice. Right. Right. What are you going to do? Well, I'm getting ready to pull this card out here to mention your movie again. You want me to mention no, it again? No, no, don't mention the movie again. Right. Don't mention that again. <laughs> it's it's done in it. September, by the way. September the 18th. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, say hello to your dog for us. I will. And good luck with your stomach. Do that again. Oh, 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 I had dodgy kishkas for a moment. So you had what? Another Jewish expression. Dodgy kishkas. The new all-Broadway, all-Jewish musical. Mind me kishkas. Does, does that mean anything? No, it means something to me, though. These are my... These are your kishkas, your gut. Uh-huh. And dodgy? Your gut. Dodgy? Yeah. They, do, when they're dodgy, you've got dodgy kishkas. I see. That's all. <laughs> I leave you with that. New from Nabisco. Well, we'll yeah. be right back. Uh, nice to see you again. We'll be back. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, we have plenty of show left for you. Coming up in uh, the next half hour, we have uh, Brian Adams and also Sarah McClendon, Capitol Hill reporter. Monday on this program, comedian Dennis Miller will be here and also Phil Collins. So that's Monday. You know, you can have your Niagara Falls, you can have your mighty Mississippi, you can have your Grand Canyon, but for natural splendor, give me a five-story tower and a truckload of stuff to drop. Let's watch the wonder of gravity at work. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dave. Boy, what a way with words you have. Hi, everybody. Well, the sun is bright, the air is warm, the grass is green, and that can mean only one thing. Soon, New Rochelle and this five-story tower will be swarmed by tourists from all over the northeastern part of the United States coming to drop an assortment of stuff off the top of this tower. It's a lot of fun. Let's get right to it. How about dropping a bag full of BBs? <laughs> all right, fine. A bag of BBs. Here you go. By the way, you can pick these up at a lot of roadside stands this time of year. Here we go. A bag of BBs. <laughs> you know, long before the telephone was invented, early man communicated simply by dropping potatoes on a distant drum. We'd like to recreate that for you now. And then when the price of potatoes began to skyrocket, they switched to tomatoes. And then one day, about a month before the phone was invented, they switched to mayonnaise. And then after the mayonnaise, they said, oh, hell, why not try the relish? All right, for once and for all, we hope to determine the difference between new Coke and old Coke. And I think the new Coke is sweeter. Maybe something from ancient mythology. Okay, here's a little something for you students of mythology. I'll be Zeus, and I'm going to throw these lightning bolts down onto a cluster of disbelieving villagers. Here we go.
know, whenever I travel across this country of ours visiting grade schools, the one question I hear most often is, Don, what's the difference between Super Bowls and eggs? Gosh, I have no idea, but let's try and find out, shall we? <laughs> You know, what's the perfect uh, after-dinner cooler for those summertime parties? What about the Molotov melon? Let me just light this boy up for you. It's no secret that the biggest fraud in American entertainment today is the CBS Late Movie. Why? It's no movie. It's cheap, lousy reruns. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, the CBS Late Movie is being canceled. <laughs>